Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing, but not today. Today we're going to talk about a very, very popular type of debate or discussion that I see non-stop, all the time, all the time, everywhere, XEQT versus uh, VFV, or on the US side, VOO versus VT. So I want to do a deep dive into this debate and why I think it's absolute nonsense and, and why it's not even a question on who the winner should be. Uh, especially if you're a growth investor where the only thing that really matters to you is total return. This is not a video on income investing. This is a video on a very, very, very popular way to invest as a growth investor. And by the way, just because I'm an income investor, I think being a growth investor is really, really good. It works. It's a really good way to invest. And there's a popular debate out there. What should you invest in? XEQT or VEQT, X, uh, ZEQT, HEQT or uh, VFV, which is the S&P 500. So <clears throat> let's do a deep dive into this. First of all, what is XEQT, VEQT? There's a million of them, right? It's, it, it's, they all have the big, the big asset managers in Canada all have their own versions. It's very easy to, to uh, remember them because they, the stock symbols all end in EQT. So XEQT is just the BlackRock Canadian one. VEQT is the Vanguard one. ZEQT is the BMO one. HEQT is the Global X Canada one. And that, there's even FEQT from Fidelity as well. So, and on the US side, the most popular one I believe is VT. I'm sure the other ones have, you know, a version of their own, et cetera, et cetera. But basically all of these, first of all, what, what are these types of funds here? Basically, it's a one-stop shop to get the best stocks all over the world. So this is not only for sector diversification, this is regional diversification. This is basically someone who says, look, I want one ETF that has the best stocks all over the world, America, Canada, Europe, emerging markets, everything. So what they've done is create these type of products or these ETFs where they basically have everything. And how they typically give you that is that this type of product will hold other products, typically big index funds, you know, their own, to basically give you exposure all around the world in one ETF. So for example, if we look at XEQT, sorry, if we look at the holdings, you will typically see this in all, all of those that I mentioned. You'll see a big chunk in one or two ETFs that gives you access to the whole US stock market. So in, in, in this case, they have the ITOT ETF. And typically the US will always be the biggest percentage. It's typically around just under 50% of the ETF right of VEQT, ZEQT, XEQT, et cetera, et cetera, will be in U.S. stocks because the U.S. is just the biggest stock market in the world, right? You'll always have a little bit, um, you'll have a, in the next two portions, you'll have some in Canada. So in this case, XEQT chose this ETF to give you your Canadian exposure, which is at 24%, pretty high. You'll have um, developed outside of North America, which is basically, you'll typically see that it's trying to replicate the EAFE, which is uh, Europe, Australia, Far East. So the biggest six economies in that type of ETF are always the big four in Europe, which is, you know, France, UK, Germany, Switzerland. And there's also some Japan, Australia, but other countries as well, like Finland and Sweden. Uh, but those are the big six in that portion. So that portion there is typically between 20 and 30%. You have Canada, which is typically between 20 and 25%. And you do have the smallest allocation is typically in an emerging markets ETF. So that would be things like China and Brazil and India, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Co up and coming uh, countries, basically economies that are, uh, that are emerging, that are not developed yet like North America. So <clears throat> That's what is basically the general premise behind ETFs like XEQT, VEQT, ZEQT, HEQT. They all have their own way of doing it. There are all little differences inside of it in terms of percentages. But if you look inside, that's typically what they do. It, it's a way to give you uh, some of the, you know, it's an ETF that holds typically four or five other ETFs that simulate giving you exposure all around the world with the main exposure being in the U.S., Fidelity one's a little, little bit different because it ha actually has some Bitcoin, right? Fidelity actually, uh, in their all-in-one equity ETF, they actually put a little bit in Bitcoin, which is, uh, you know, 3.8%, which is very, very interesting. They put their own Bitcoin ETF in there. That's the only exception. But besides that little Fidelity exception, that's the general premise. So that's in Canada. In the US, you have the same type of deal with VT, right? It's the same type of deal. Give me exposure all around the world. Now, VFV is only the S&P 500. So 
Obviously, we know what the S&P 500 is, right? Because we're doing XEQT or what all those EQTs versus VFV and VT versus VO. So VFV is the Canadian listed S&P 500. It would be the same thing as ZSP. These are non-Canadian hedged, whereas VSP is Canadian dollar hedged. We'll get back to that in a second. But on the US side, you have VOO, very, very popular. You have the SPY ETF as well. And from uh, BlackRock, you have IVV, all the same, right? S&P 500. So this debate, the debate is, what should I get? Should I get the S&P 500 basically or an ETF that has the whole world? So let's go through the reasoning and why I'm going to, why I think that the debate is silly and why the S&P 500 should be, will always be your number one choice and the winner. All right, guys. So why is why is VFV will always be a better idea than the rest of those? Why will VOO be always beat the VT? This is my opinion, but I don't really think it's a matter of opinion because we're going to look at the facts now. So as a growth investor, aka total return investor, right? That's your top priority. What is the most important thing? Total return. So we're going to have to look at the performance now, of course, guys. So um, if we compare, for example, let's let's do an, a benchmark in terms of returns for the last 10 years. Okay. So unfortunately, none of these EQT ETFs have been around longer than 10, than 10 years, but the S&P 500 uh, uh, has. So if you look at VFV in terms of performance, everyone, you actually see in the last 10 years, the average annual performance is almost 15%. You might be thinking, well, that's a little high. Why is it so high? Well, that's because this is in Canadian dollars and the Canadian dollar has gotten weaker. So that helps the performance, right? If we look at, you'll get the same similar performance of ZSP, right? In the last 10 years, uh, we're talking, uh, yeah, in, in just under 15%. But if we look at the non-hedged, uh, sorry, the, the, the Canadian dollar hedge rather in the last 10 years, the performance is much worse. It's 11 Point three. But what I will do is actually use the American ones as our benchmark. So if we look at VOO or IVV in the last 10 years, guys, it's about, let's just say 12, 12 and a half percent average return every year in the last 10 years. So that is really the benchmark. So the S&P 500 benchmark that or, or number I'm going to use in the last 10 years, I will just use 12, 12 and a half percent. All right. So if we compare that to the VT, for example, in the last 10 years, it's significantly less at 8.55%. So that is really my biggest point here. The S&P 500 will always outperform the whole world. And it's not really that hard to figure out, right? The uh, VEQ, VFV will always outperform VEQT, in my opinion. And we don't have the 10-year data. But if we look at, for example, the last five years, 11%. Uh, but if we look at um, the S&P 500 in the last five years, it's 15%. It's actually a big, big difference in terms of performance. Still don't believe me? Let's actually compare VEQT versus VFV uh, since the beginning. Uh, well, this is since 2019 only. Uh, you could see that there's a big difference, right? If you would invest in 10 grand, you would have 17.4 with the EQT and 10 grand in VFV would have 22,000. Guys, this is a big, big, big difference. If we go back, which is even more telling VT versus VOO, because it's going to take a start date of 2010. So this is 14 years of data, guys. Look at these numbers. Your 10K would be only 34 and a half with VT, but with VOO, it would be 61,100. I mean, look at that difference. So the question is why? So you're probably asking why. Why does the whole world always underperform the S&P 500? Well, it's very, very, very simple, guys. Is because when you buy the whole world, yes, you're, you're getting exposure to the US and the S&P 500, but you're also getting exposure to Canada, Europe, and emerging markets, which always underperform the S&P 500. And the proof is in the pudding. Let's look at Canada first. XIU, or the TSX 60, is a good way to measure the overall Canadian stock market. If we look at the performance in the last 10 years, just under 8%, a far cry from the S&P 500's 12 and a half, right? If we look at the typical way that they will put the Europe and Japan, Australia, it's even worse. It's disgusting performance in the last 10 years, 4.77, right? Europe, UK, France, Germany, 
uh, Australia, Japan, look at that crappy performance. Only 4.77% return average annually in the last 10 years. Emerging markets. I don't know what the big deal is with these emerging markets. Look at the performance in the last 10 years, 2.26, dismal, dismal, dismal. So, of course, if you're going to have emerging markets, Canada developed outside North America mixed in with U.S., of course, that ETF, the whole world is going to underperform the S&P 500. Now, I could give you my suspicions on why emerging markets, Canada, Europe, uh, Japan, Australia, etc., will always underperform in the last 10, has underperformed in the last 10 years, and I feel will always underperform in the future. It's because a lot of those countries are more socialist or communist countries, guys, whereas America is predominantly a capitalist economy. That economy is the strongest in the world in terms of economy. America will always win for that reason. So that's the first and major factor I feel why something like a VT or an XEQT or a VEQT, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, will always underperform an S&P 500 ETF. It's the composition. It's the economy. It's, it's the economy, stupid, right? Like Bill Clinton said. So guys, America's number one. I don't understand if you're a growth investor. I do not understand why, what the debate is. XEQT versus VFV or VOO versus VT. Why is there a debate? You think that a socialist and communist economy will all of a sudden start beating a capitalist economy? It's not going to work. It doesn't, they will always underperform in my opinion. These are my opinions, of course, but I don't see any argument with any logic that says, you know, got to invest in emerging markets because these economies are about to blow up. Guys, these are I mean, we're talking about China and, and we're talking about communist countries. In here, we're talking about predominantly socialist countries. Look what's going on in, in, in France and UK. I mean, these are terrible, terrible economies because there's high taxes. Canada as well. Why is, the, why is Canadian market underperforming and not doing well in particular right now? Big government equals red tape. Higher taxes equals less less investment. It's as simple as that. It's just logic. The numbers don't lie. The performance numbers don't lie. And here's the kicker. The kicker is, is that this style of ETF, whether it's VT or XQT, et cetera, et cetera, the management fee is actually higher than the S&P 500, right? VT's MER is 0.07, whereas VOO is 0.03. XEQT's MER is, I believe it's 0.20 or something like that, right? They're, they're diff the, uh, the Canadian ones, the EQTs are all a bit different, 0.20. But if you get the S&P 500, it's 0 0.09. That, that's less than half of the fee, guys. So not only, you know, if, and you could look at the, the individual ETFs as well, right? If you look at XIU Canada, I think the fee is pretty low. I don't think it's, it's that high. It's 0 0.02. But if you look at a typical Europe, Australia, Japan one, the fee is going to be higher than the S&P 500, right? 0.33. Emerging markets, it's funnier because it's even higher. Uh, emerging market fee, 0.70. Th these are BlackRock, right? So these are the lowest fee. So you're paying, not only are you paying for some, you're paying more for something that is underperforming with the emerging markets. It, it doesn't, with this one as well, it doesn't make sense. This is why, guys. Always, my opinion here, there is no debate. I don't understand this dumbass debate. VFV, aka VOO, the S&P 500 will always beat the whole world because America is really is what propping up VT. If you take out America from VT or the whole world, it'll be terrible, much, much more terrible performance than 8%. I can guarantee you that it'll probably be more like 5%. So I don't understand what the debate is. I would always, always go, if you're a growth investor, I would always go with the S&P 500 instead. You get a better quality stocks, better economy, and a lower fee. I just don't see what the debate is all about. So hopefully this video was informative for you. And, you know, I'm not saying it's bad or it's a bad idea, by the way, to get something like an XEQT, VEQT. If getting the whole world for some reason makes you feel better than just getting the S&P 500, that's fine. But a, a, a tip I could give you, at least a recommendation, at least get HEQL because it's HEQT with 25% leverage. At least you'll get a little bit of a boost with that leverage. But... Global X now has all their growth ETFs as well with leverage, right? So if you do USC, 
this one here, USSX, this is their S&P 500, right? Which it would be the same thing as a VFV or a ZSP. But if you just change the X to an L, I, I, I hope it's that, you get the S&P, the enhanced S&P 500. So this is the S&P 500 with 25% leverage. This of course will, in my opinion, beat even HEQL, which is the whole world with 25% leverage. But hey, that's just my opinion. That's just my, my, my tip for you. If you absolutely need to get the whole world for some reason, go with HEQL. At least you'll get a little bit more performance, but it's, it's not an excuse to you know, avoid the S&P 500. S&P 500 is king, guys. So give me a thumbs up. I hope you liked the video and see you next time. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades. And Passive, I have half off for the Elite Membership. If you're interested in the Elite Membership, and even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of Passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama and there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.